right guys today we're doing some work on the w123 240d um i have to do the oil change i have to um change the valve stem seals and do the valve adjustment on it and possibly remove the exhaust manifold for painting and protecting um and we're probably gonna have to do uh, which I'm gonna do later today, I guess, is the flex discs and uh, center support bearing. Look at this guys, who is this? <laughs> that is crazy. That is a little frog. Isn't it? That looks like it, sure. There's no way. There is just no way guys. Jeez. Well, I guess sometimes you can find something like that inside the air filter box of your old school Mercedes. Whoa, box, what are you doing? Where, did you want, where do you want to go? You gotta stay there. Anyways, I'm gonna keep working on this, remove all this stuff, and uh, I'm gonna keep working on this uh, amazing OM616, guys. All right, here's a look at our amazing engine. Um, I've already uh, pulled the valve cover off and I've worked on this engine before as well. I changed the timing chain tension and all that stuff. I've actually never done the valve adjustment on this this one, but I'm getting ready to, um, uh, you know, actually replace the valve stem seals and um, then do the valve adjustment afterwards. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go ahead and uh, start on that, guys. And uh, you know, as far as the lobes, everything looks really nice and good. Um, so yeah, this engine is amazing. I mean, I don't know, it probably has closer to a million miles or something right now. Um, it shows 329,000 miles, but it's more, it's a lot more for sure, so. Alright uh, guys, I have new valve stem seals I'll be putting on uh, and before I put them on I actually have clean oil and I'll let them soak in the clean oil. Clean oil. I'll let them soak there. So what I did is I put the uh, engine uh, to the top dead center crankshaft uh, on the mark OT this is also on the top dead center pretty much so what you want to do is you're gonna go cylinder by cylinder so this is the first cylinder right now so the piston is all the way up top so you want to have this lobe pointing that way and the intake lobe pointing the other way but they're pretty much they pretty much have to have no tension on the rocker arms Alright, so these are your aquariums. 
and basically you can move them and there's going to be play um, and you can also look at the springs make sure the springs are not compressed this these springs are not compressed and the ones on the second cylinder are compressed so that's the difference okay uh, the reason why you want that is uh, so your valves uh, like when you remove the spring and um, there's nothing else holding that valve basically in place so uh, you don't want the valve to drop all the way into the cylinder so that's why you, your piston has to be all the way up so right now cylinder one is all the way up and what you need to do is you need to remove the rocker arms right here uh, so this is one set and then there's a second set right there so it's eight millimeter allen bolt you're gonna take it off and same with that one and that way you're gonna get access to your valve stem seals Okay, these are coming off. One, two, three, and four. Okay, rocker arms are loose. So I just gotta, the bolts are loose, I mean. So now you just have to kind of use a pry bar or something and lock them loose so you can take it out. Carefully with a pry bar, just press on them. There you go, that's it. They're out, put them in a clean spot. Sometimes you might need to rotate the engine a little bit, that way you can release it all. So turn it with a 22 millimeter wrench or adjustable wrench. Condition of rocker arms, pretty good. Same thing, put them there. All right guys, so now we're left with the springs and stuff like that, okay? So, I moved the engine a little, so what we're gonna do is, uh, mm, I'm gonna probably start with this, next cylinder which is gonna be this guy okay cylinder three and you can go by the firing order all right so cylinder one was first and then cylinder three is coming up so i'm gonna start with that guy all right guys so like i said you can use a 22 millimeter wrench and turn the power steering pump that will turn the engine make sure your belt is tight though because if your belt is not tight it's not gonna turn or you can go ahead, all, go all the way to the bottom and use 27 millimeter uh, socket on the crankshaft pulley. All right. Anyways, guys, so uh, I'm gonna start with cylinder three. All right. And what you wanna make sure is, like I said, this lobe is facing this way, this lobe is facing left. And that way, this thing is uh, gonna be all good. And then that means that your piston is all the way up top. I'm gonna start removing all these bolts. One, two, one, two. And I will, I'll be doing it one by one, okay? And uh, we'll see how things are. All right, so I'm removing this top nut. I'm gonna be left with the bottom nut. Okay. Put them into a clean, like, spot don't get them dirty all right so the top nut is out now what i like to do is i like to count the threads that way when i put everything back i can kind of like align it so my valve adjustment isn't gonna be uh, way too off it will be easier to adjust later so i count this was like seven threads right here so i'm gonna remember that after that you remove this top spring support and the spring itself there you go put it in a clean spot all right guys here's the valve stem all right you can move it up and down as you can see this is hitting the top of the piston okay so if your piston was all the way on the bottom that center 
this thing this valve would just drop inside and you would have to pull that cylinder head off okay so anyways guys i'm gonna go ahead and start replacing this stuff um the valve guide feels good you just move it back and forth like side to side feels all right so i'm gonna go ahead and pull these off okay all right so to remove the valve stem seal you just gotta use some kind of pliers like these and just grab the sides of it and just wiggle back and forth it will come out eventually this is already off i removed it and just carefully pull it up and off she goes right here all right guys so some of my valve stems have been soaking okay so i'm gonna go ahead and install the first one and i just wanted to show you a precaution so when you install a new one you have to put some kind of protectant right here i'm gonna use the like a plastic bag right now because you don't want to put a valve stem seal over this because you can damage it because of the threads all right so just be very careful my new valve stem seal it's gonna go over the top of that guy hopefully it's gonna be good all right here it is guys and make sure that you remove the glove or whatever else protecting you were using and uh, now what you have to left is push this thing on and you can try to use your fingers or the tool in this case i'm going to try to use my fingers first if it doesn't work i'm going to use a tool all right guys once again i got the old one out Putting a new one in. I was already soaking in oil. two of these are reinstalled we're gonna go ahead and uh, reinstall the spring and two nuts right here so when you install these uh, stem seals you push them down you should be able to hear like a click almost and uh, sometimes they don't click so you just have to kind of like measure from the bottom to the top just kind of compare both of these Make sure the distance is the same, and then make sure you can't pull them off by hand. And then that should be good. Okay. When you're done, just tighten them both. And do the same to the other valves. All right, when you're done with this cylinder, uh, move on to the next one. All right, I just turned the engine and just wanted to show you. Um, this is your intake lobe. It's pointing to the left and that's the exhaust lobe pointing to the right. So that way you can see that the lobes are not pressing on the valves or anything. They're not down. So that means that the cylinder is pretty much like top dead center. Uh, not exactly top dead center, but it's like right there on the top. So that's gonna ensure that you know, your your valve will not drop or anything. So all right, I'm gonna take care of the rest of these valves, and I'm gonna get back to you afterwards. All right, guys. So here's another tip: if you're afraid that your valve is gonna fall into the cylinders, so as soon as you remove this spacer. You kind of uh, use a screwdriver and hold it where the threads are right there and then you screw 
the nut on that thing. All right, so as soon as you do that, the nut is on so you can release it. Sometimes it will fall, sometimes it will, it will not. So in this case, screw it on, okay? So the nut is on, so we're safe. So right now you can go ahead and push it down and that's it, all right? Can remove the spring and that's it, that's your safety. So in case you did something wrong or you didn't put it to the right position, you can always be sure that the nut is gonna always stop it, okay? So now we can take the nut off and proceed to replacing your uh, valve stem seal. And if you're working with cylinder number one, it's good to put something right there so nothing drops into the engine. So go ahead and put something like a rag or some clean paper towel. So just in case nothing is gonna fall in. Okay, so all the stem seals were replaced now I can go ahead and uh, install my rock arms all right guys so there's another Benz over there that came uh, it's my friends and as you can see I have everything back together pretty much um, I have the air filter box everything it was all cleaned up I cleaned the air filter box put it all back and I'm adjusting the valves right now. I'm using these bent wrenches that I made. You, in order to make them, you have to, you know, just go somewhere by the two 14 millimeter wrenches and, you know, heat them up with like map torch or blow torch and just uh, uh, bend them. And then one of them you have to actually grind so it fits um, on the bottom nut. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, I'm not going to show you the whole procedure how to do this. There's lots of other videos online how you can adjust your valves. So yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, keep on working and putting this thing back together. Alright guys, so uh, this is the intake valve I'm adjusting. It's a 0 0.10 millimeters feeler gauge and it goes in with a slight drag this is what you want so that's it this valve is adjusted and here we have an old school mercedes right there too yeah beautiful car needs some work obviously i love the green color guys while I'm working on the 240D my friend here is working on this 300D this Euro model so his window dropped down and it's not coming up anymore so I'm showing you how to take this panel off so we can see what's up with it um, yeah so you have those screws out and I'll take that out and then you're gonna move this plate towards you yeah Other than that, uh, she needs some work, but she's a sweet car. I think you should name it uh, Avocado or something, man. She already has a name. What is it? Jenny. Jenny? Oh, Jenny. That's good, man. <laughs> it's our Jenny over here. <laughs> That's amazing. It's gonna get? Probably. So this was off and she's supposed to be there and just came out probably lack of lubrication and uh what it did it bent this part so first we have to fix this and put it back together and put the window back up and it's held on by the tape right now before we're installing everything we're gonna you know put a lot of grease in here and everything so yeah. valve adjustment is done guys i'm about to put the valve cover back on and refill her with oil. Cheers, guys, cheers.
we'll go ahead and try to start it after the refreshment the new seals were put on it's neutral I did not connect everything here because I'll be uh, lubing up the linkage and stuff. I'm gonna let it run. 